In order to understand quantum mechanics, there's some basic vocabulary that needs to, that I need to go over. So let's talk about the key concepts in quantum mechanics. Thankfully, there are only a few. There's really only three. And the first is the wave function. The wave function is, and always has been, written as psi, the Greek letter. My handwriting gets a little lazy sometimes, and it'll end up just looking like this, but technically it's supposed to look something like that. Details are important, provided you recognize the symbol. Psi is a function of position, potentially in three dimensions, x, y, and z, and time. And the key facts here is that psi is a complex function, which means that while x, y, z, and t here are real numbers, psi, evaluated at a particular point in space, will potentially be a complex number with both a real and imaginary part. What is subtle about the wave function, and we'll talk about this in great detail later, is that it, while it represents the state of the system, it doesn't tell you with any certainty what the observable properties of the system are. It really only gives you probabilities. So for instance, if I have a coordinate system, something like this, where say this is position in the x direction, psi, with both real and imaginary parts, might look something like this. This could be the real part of psi, and this could be, say, the complex or the imaginary part of psi. What is physically meaningful is the squared magnitude of psi, which might look something like this in this particular case. And that is related to the probability of finding the particle at a particular point in space. Um, as I said, we'll talk about this later, but the key facts that you need to know about the wave function is that it's complex and it describes the state of the system, but not with certainty. The next key concept in quantum mechanics is that of an operator. Now, operators are what connect psi to observable quantities. That is one thing operators can do. Just a bit of notation, usually we use hats for operators. For instance, x hat or p hat are operators that you'll encounter shortly. Operators act on psi. So if you want to apply, for instance, the x hat operator to psi, you would write x hat psi. As if this were something that were, as it appears on the left of psi, the assumption is that x acts on psi. If I write psi x hat, doesn't necessarily mean that x hat acts on psi. You assume operators act on whatever lies to the right. Likewise, of course, p hat psi. Now, We'll talk about this in more detail later, but x hat, the operator, can be thought of as just multiplying by x. So if I have psi as a function of x, x hat psi is just going to be x times psi of x. So if psi was a polynomial, you could multiply x by that polynomial. The, the p operator, p hat, uh, is another example is a little bit more complicated. This is just an example now, and technically this is the momentum operator, but we'll talk more about that later. It's equal to minus h-bar times the derivative with respect to x. So this is again something that needs a function, needs the wave function, to actually give you anything meaningful. Now the important thing to note about the operators is that they don't give you the observable quantities either, but in quantum mechanics, you can't really say the momentum of the wave function. For instance, p hat psi is not, and I'll put this in quotes because you won't hear this phrase very often, the momentum of psi. It's the momentum operator acting on psi, and that's not the same thing as the momentum of psi. The final key concept in quantum mechanics is the Schrodinger equation. And this is really the big equation.
So I'll write it big. I h bar partial derivative of psi with respect to time is equal to h hat, that's an operator, acting on psi. Now h hat here is the Hamiltonian, which you can think of as the energy operator. So the property of the physical system that H is associated with is the energy of the system. And the energy of the system can be thought of as a kinetic energy. So we can write a kinetic energy operator plus a potential energy operator together acting on psi. And it turns out the kinetic energy operator can be written down. This is going to end up looking like minus H bar squared over 2M partial derivative of psi with respect to, oops, sorry, second partial derivative of psi with respect to position, plus, and then the potential energy operator is going to look like the potential energy is a function of position, just multiplied by psi. So this is the Schrodinger equation. Typically, you'll be working with it in this form. So I h bar times the partial derivative with respect to time is related to the partial derivative with respect to space and then multipl multiplied by some function. The basic quantum mechanics that we're going to learn in this course mostly revolves around solving this function and interpreting the results. So to put these in a bit of a road map, we have operators. We have the Schrodinger equation. and we have the wave function. Now operators act on the wave function and operators are used in the Schrodinger equation. Now the wave function that actually describes the state of the system is going to be the solution to the Schrodinger equation. Now, I mentioned operators acting on the wave function. What they give you when they act on the wave function is some property of the system, some observable, perhaps. And the other key fact that I mentioned so far is that the wave function doesn't describe the system perfectly. It only gives you probabilities. So that's our overall concept map. Um, to put this in the context of the course outline, the probabilities are really the key feature of quantum mechanics, and we're going to start this course with a discussion of probabilities. We'll talk about the wave function after that and how the wave function is related to those probabilities, and we'll end up talking about operators and how those operators and the wave functions together give you probabilities associated with observable quantities. That will lead us into a discussion of the Schrodinger equation, which will be most of the course, really. Um, the bulk of the material before the first exam will be considered with various, or concerned with various examples. Um, solution to the Schrodinger equation under various circumstances. This is really the main meat of quantum mechanics in the beginning. After that, we'll do some formalism. And what that means is we'll learn about some advanced mathematical tools that make keeping track of all the details of how all of this fits together uh, a lot more straightforward. And then we'll finish up the course by doing some applications. So those are our key concepts and a general roadmap through the course. Hopefully now you have the basic vocabulary necessary to understand phrases like the momentum operator acts on the wave function or the solution to the Schrodinger equation describes the state of the system and that sort of thing. Don't worry too much if these concepts haven't quite clicked. In order to really understand quantum mechanics, you have to get experience with them. These are not things that you really have any intuition for based on anything you've seen in physics so far. So bear with me, and this will all make sense in the end, I promise.